NBC Sports presents NCAA College Football. Today, for the National Championship in Division II of the NCAA, it's the Panthers of Eastern Illinois against the Mustangs of Cal Poly of San Luis Obispo. Eastern Illinois hopes to win the title for the second time. Cal Poly is looking for its first. Here's how the coaches view it. Two years ago, in one of the most exciting games that I've ever personally been involved with, uh, we beat Delaware 10-9 to in the championship game. And our team is uh, really anxious to take another track of the championship, and I think we've, we're perhaps good enough to do it again. Our team has worked too hard to get here today to not come home with a victory. We intend to win the championship. For the eighth year, the NCAA is conducting this playoff to determine the national championship in Division II. A year ago, here at the Zia Bowl, the home of the University of New Mexico, Delaware beat Youngstown State for the title. We'll have a new champion this year. Well, they had four inches of snow in Albuquerque this past week, and yesterday this field had to be scraped off and dried out, even by a helicopter, believe it or not. And it's still a little bit slippery and soggy because rain has moved in from the mountains intermittently today. Temperature about 40 degrees. It could be for some rather slippery going this afternoon. Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Fleming, welcoming you to this NCAA championship in Division II. If you'll recall, a week ago in Division III, Dayton won the title. Next week in Division I AA, it'll be determined in Sacramento. But today, here in Albuquerque, we determine who wins in Division II. Now, let's take a look at how these two teams fared during the season. Illinois ranked number one in Division II with a 9-2 season record. Those two losses coming to Division I teams. Cal Poly has three losses, again, to Division I teams, one higher echelon above. In the playoffs, in the first round, Eastern Illinois over Northern Colorado, Cal Poly against Jacksonville State winning and shutting them out. Then in the semifinals last week, Eastern Illinois one over Northern Alabama, 56 to 31, although trailing at one point in the game. And Cal Poly polished off Santa Clara. So, coming into this game, 11 and 2, season score overall for Eastern Illinois. Cal Poly is 9 and 3. I'd like to introduce to you right now former head coach at Navy and also of the Detroit Lions, who's been with us on ABC for five glorious years, Rick Frazzano. Rick, how do you view it? Well, I'll tell you, anytime you play for the national championship, it's just got to be super. And this is one of those big ones. And the teams are coming onto the field now. Eastern Illinois will be dressed in the white uniforms today, trimmed in silver and blue. And as you can see, they come on with an 11-2 mark, as we mentioned, ranked number one in Division II this year. And here comes Cal Poly of San Luis Obispo. That's what the SLO stands for. And as mentioned, they defeated Santa Clara 38-14 in the semifinal last year, dressed in green, trimmed in white, and in yellow. Now let's talk about these two teams. Uh, Rick, I think we have a, a rather interesting matchup between uh, two sections of the country. Well, we certainly do. Eastern Illinois representing the Midwest. They come out throwing the football. They're going to average throwing the ball about 35 times a game, and they'll throw on first down, second down, any place on the football field. And they use the two-quarterback system, which is odd. And between the two quarterbacks, they have thrown for 31 touchdowns and just a ton of yards. All right, let's take a look at the two uh, quarterbacks that we're going to be seeing probably in equal amounts today. Oh, we certainly will, but uh, Chuck Wright on your left, he's a young man that will start the football game, and he has a tendency, though, to maybe throw some interceptions early in the game. Their favorite receiver is 25, Scott McGee. He has 19 touchdowns. He will go inside. This is a young man that must be stopped by Cal Poly on defense. Scott McGee. They like the shotgun. Jeff Christensen especially likes the shotgun again. Going to Scott McGee who is really tough. And one guy they have who can really sprint is Kevin Staple. Now he's just a young freshman and has played very, very well this year. And I think we're going to see him on those wide sweeps today. Defensively, one of the most exciting players I think we've uh, come in contact in a long time, followed by the name of Pete Caton, who was this week named as an All-American. Well, they call him Sledgehammer, and I'll tell you, they have reason to. He has 12 sacks, 48 career sacks. He just rushes their middle linebacker, Alonzo Lee. He has many interceptions. He's their big play guy. The thing he can do, he can block punts. He has two already this year. It helped win a ball game last week, recovered by Mike Trepanier, and he's going to get killed by his teammates right here, too, Bill. 
Oh, that's the penalty for scoring a touchdown. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about Cal Poly right now because I think one of the interesting things about this game is that Cal Poly has the nation's leading rusher in Division II. His name is Lewis Jackson. And whenever you have a strong defensive team like Eastern Illinois with, the, let's say, the challenge of facing the nation's leading rusher, it presents a rather interesting problem. Well, it does. But they do use at Cal Poly a balanced attack. And there's Lewis Jackson, number nine. He is an All-American. He can carry the football. He has carried the ball for 55 times in one ball game. has 34 career TDs. So Lewis Jackson knows where the end zone is, and he's another man that must be stopped by the Eastern Illinois defense. Two years ago, quarterback Craig Johnston had broken his leg, couldn't play in uh, this particular championship game, and his team lost out. Well, now he's back, and Robbie Martin's an exciting guy. Oh, Robbie Martin, he is their leading receiver, has 10 TDs catching the ball already, but here's where he is dangerous. He can return punts. He has returned three touchdowns already on punt returns. So when, when they are punting, when Eastern Illinois is punting, watch for Robbie Martin on the returns. And that was a crucial one last week. Now defensively, Chris Jones, number 20, and Jan Kirchhoff, number 53, are two that we're going to be watching very closely today. Well, Chris Jones is their free safety. He can intercept the ball. Jan Kirchhoff only had one interception all year. He's their leading tackler. But boy, was it an important interception. An 83-yard interception return. That's a dream for a defensive player. So it does make, indeed, for an interesting matchup today, a team that is ranked number one in the nation, Eastern Illinois, against Cal Poly. Eastern Illinois, as you heard Darrell Mudra say, won this title two years ago and could become the first team to win it twice. I don't know how you approach a game like this, but I think Rick Forzano, as a former coach, you would know exactly the philosophy you have to accept. Well, to play for the national championship, number one, you know your teams are going to be ready. But when you look at Eastern Illinois, they've got to stop Lewis Jackson. He's the key. He's made more yards for Cal Poly rushing the ball than the whole Eastern Illinois team. Then on the other side of the line, Cal Poly must put the pressure on the passers Christensen and Wright for Eastern Illinois and shut down Scott McGee. But I'll tell you, you have big plays in big player games. You can't beat yourself. That's the biggest thing. And it is for a national title. I think that's the, the thing that we all talk about, how glorious it is to have a national championship in your trophy case. Oh, I tell you, you can coach, you can play for years and years, and you never get the opportunity, and we have it here today. Today, from the University Stadium in Albuquerque, New Mexico, ABC Sports presents this NCAA Division II championship. Sunday, Charlie's Angels are joined by Barbie Benton and Carol Lindley as they track a hired assassin. Looks like we got a live one. Who wants to crown a trio of angels? Then the lights go out. We just lost the whole city. And all the rules change. I think it's time you called out the National Guard. For one night, anything goes. It's the Most say the locomotive is the Hercules of horsepower. But farmers need diesel power, too. Like the turbocharged power of this 180 horse tractor from Alice Chalmers. 20 forward speeds, shipped on the go. Surefoot traction booster system. Now, we aren't trying to convince you that our two-wheel drive 7080 tractor is as powerful as a locomotive. But then you never saw a locomotive plow a field. Time more equipment company in our coal and LaPlace. Rolling today for you tomorrow. You know, dear, we've cut way down on our fuel bills by putting in thermal guard windows. No more drafts, tight custom fit, easy cleaning with tilt feature. And you know, they were in here and out in one day. Honey? How much did we save? Well, a considerable amount. Good, because I just bought a new living room set. Thermoguard, the number one replacement window. Other companies promise fuel savings. We guarantee it. Call Collect now. 367-0140. 367-0140. All-Star Home Restyling Incorporated. And we'll receive the football. And we'll defend the goal line to our left. The uh, Cal Poly team wanting to get the benefit of the wind, which is rather strong right now, blowing in from the right to the left, from east to west. More appropriately, I guess, north to south. Tom DeSello teeing up the ball and going back is Kevin Staple, number eight. 20 returns this year for a 22.3 average. And the quarterbacks are warming up. This is for Eastern Illinois, obviously. Chuck Wright, and you'll see uh, Jeff Christensen on the sideline, and we're underway now for the national title. Taken by Kevin Staple. Reverses the ball. 
Comes to Kevin Gray. Doesn't fool anybody. Gets up to about the 18 yard line. Well, we've seen that a few times, Rick Rosano. <laughs> All right, let's take a look now at the Eastern Illinois offense. Chuck Wright, senior from Canton, Illinois, quarterback. Kevin Staple, freshman from Markham, Illinois. The fullback will be number 45, Rod Slaughter, from Detroit Cast Tech. Scott McGee, a senior from Palos Heights, Illinois. And the split end, Otis Grant from Des Plaines. First and 10 on the 18. It's a simple handoff off the left side of the line. Rod Slaughter, the fullback, gets it up just on the 25-yard line. All right, the offensive line, 6'6", 260 is Dobrich. 6'4", 255 is Parker. You can see these are big guys. Rocky Becker, 6'3", 210, all of whom have gotten their Western hats, it seems. Blair Brown's a 245. Clinton Davenport is a 245. And Rob Mahalik, you got to keep your eye on a junior, 215, and can move. He split is the tight end. Second down, and three to go. Flag is down, and the pass is completed to McGee up to the 39-yard line. Alarcio well, brought him down, but there was a marker down at the line. Somebody might have moved. Well, we'll wait and see. Incidentally, while we're doing it, we can might well, uh, the right uh, the right end may have pulled off his stance there for. Just a fraction of a second early. Well, it's difficult to tell right there, but they a little turn into Scott McGee from their favorite formation, the shotgun. But that time they were caught in a penalty situation, and I believe they will come up with long yardage here. It's a five-yard mark off. Well, we'll hear from you. Illegal motion on the offense. Motion. Illegally. Second down. So it'll be second down, and make it about a long eight yards. Got Gil Martin, Duggan, Reeder, Schmidt, Hasselberg, Kirchhoff, and Kaufman defensively. Delayed handoff goes to Kevin Staple. Doesn't get much as Jan Kirchhoff, number 53, and number 86, Jerry Schmidt, bring him down. So it brings up the big third down. This is the opening sequence of plays with 1343 to go. In the first one, and Kaufman. And behind them, we've got Gallagher, McDaniel, Jones, and Alarcio. Third in about six. McGee comes out wide to the right, just out of the picture. And right goes back. Looks, pressure, throws it. Uh-oh. Almost. <laughs> that was so dangerous. Getting pressure from Hugh Duggan, he almost threw an interception. That would have been a little wiser maybe to hang on to it. I believe you're right, and that is the thing that Cal Poly has to do. They have to put the pressure on the quarterback of Eastern Illinois, and this time Cal Poly does a great job, led by Hugh Duggan, their defensive tackle. See the pressure from number 93, and they have to exert that all day long on the passing game of Eastern Illinois if Cal Poly is to be successful on defense. There was a marker down on the play, and I have a feeling, just uh, as a preliminary call, that it was against Eastern Illinois as it's moved all the way back to the oh inside the 10 down to the eight yard line well here's Mansky back in a punting situation obviously a dead ball foul which moved it 15 yards back and so Mansky will be standing in his end zone and been it's going to be punting against a pretty good stiff win Cal has played very well defensively in this first series against a strong Eastern Illinois team, right? Number one of the nation. Gets it away. Low line drive coming up and bouncing at the 42. It's taken by Robbie Martin. He can move down the sidelines, the wall of blockers. Look out, he's only got one man to beat. It's a touchdown. Robbie Martin goes forward yards for a touchdown. There is a potent bucket that we've seen before. That is his fourth punt return touchdown of the year. 43 yards. Bill, well, we talked about it at the beginning of the show. Now, this is a low punt. This is something a punt returner just loves to return. He gets it on the first bounce. There's a wall set up on the left side. He's going to get a critical block right there. But anytime you have a guy like Robbie Martin, 
back there returning the ball. He just scares you to death. He does an intelligent job of running. He uses his block. A big touchdown, Cal Poly. And it comes with less than two minutes gone in the game. The first time that Cal Poly gets its hands on the football. Here's Tom Vassella trying the extra point. Greg Johnston will hold. It's up, and it's perfect. And Cal Poly of San Luis Obispo has taken the lead for the national title over Eastern Illinois. Hey, Bill Cosby here with a few family pictures. No, wait, <laughs> don't leave. They're pictures of one of the biggest families in America. All the thousands of Red Cross volunteers. You know, Red Cross doesn't just help people after tornadoes. They help people relocate after fires. They help veterans, older citizens. They teach kids to swim. They teach people to save lives. That's Red Cross. Help keep Red Cross ready. Lincoln Mercury introduces the totally new Lynx. Its hemispherical head engine, advanced transmission, and aerodynamic shape combine to produce exceptional fuel efficiency. Starting today, the world belongs to an American car. Starting today, the world belongs to Lynx. There once was a man named Linus who needed a muffler from Midas. When lo and behold, his shocks broke in a hole. And then as fate would have it, his brakes had had it. Then Linus needed more than a muffler from Midas. But he didn't despair. He knew brakes and shocks were there at a price that would be more than fair. The moral of the story is easy to recognize. For mufflers, brakes, and shocks, it pays to Midas eyes. End zone. He doesn't want to run this one out. So once again, Eastern Illinois will take over the football. Can you believe that Cal Poly has not run an offensive play from scrimmage and still leads seven to nothing? Well, I'll tell you, strange things happen in football, Bill. You know, Rick, you made a comment uh, that Eastern Illinois was going to come out passing a week ago. In the Northern Alabama game, they went down the length of the field in, what, eight or nine plays and only had one pass. And here we are with only one pass. And, well, actually, I guess you'd call it two pass attempts. It'll be interesting to see now if they stick to that. Yep, right back to throw. Out of time on this one. Goes too long. Well, you've got to give credit to the Cal Poly defense. You look downfield, they were in a zone defense, and every... Receiver downfield for Eastern Illinois was covered perfectly. Wright had no one to throw the football to. Chuck Wright's uh, stats on the season. I think the thing is interesting is Jeff Richardson has just about the same amount as they shared the role as quarterback. 12.25 to go, first quarter, and Eastern Illinois with the ball is trailing for this national title. And off goes to Staple. Not much there up to the 20. Hugh Duggan, number 93, in there at Kevin Reeder. That is the second time on second and long that Eastern Illinois, a passing team, has run the football with Staples, which is really an odd call. So after losing three on the first down pass, uh, weather is not all that encouraging. It was supposed to be 60 degrees today and sunny. Someone didn't tell the weatherman, Bill. And the rain is, and snow in the mountains now as we look out a little bit to the east. Third down, right fires. He's got it. Number 90 is the split end, Otis Grant, a senior from Des Plaines, Illinois. And he's got the first down at the 33-yard line. I think an interesting fact about Eastern Illinois is they've been behind six times this year at halftime. Well, all good teams can come back. This time, Wright is getting excellent protection. It's a turn in to Otis Grant, who is really one of their primary receivers. He's a guy that when they decoy to Scott McGee, they go to Otis Grant. First and 10 on the 33-yard line. Wright gets hit, loses the football, but it's recovered by number 31. That's Lawrence Baker. Laurent Baker making the uh, recovery. 
Here's a good look at the pressure put on by Tom Perry, number 92. I am surprised of the way that Cal Poly can put the pressure on, but you'll have to remember in the last two playoff games, they have had 18 sacks, so they are capable, and Tom Perry that time did what you want to do when you want to have good defense, pressure the quarterback. Makes a second down and 20, all in the 24-yard line of Eastern Illinois, and having a hard time getting the offense moving here on the draw to give it to Rod Slaughter, the fullback, who spins up to about the 29-yard line. Hirschhoff and Mel Kaufman, numbers 53 and 56, making the stop. You can tell by the way Rod Slaughter ran that time, Bill, that that footing down there is not too good, and it may have a little bit of an effect on the passing game of Eastern Illinois. Teams came out to work out a little bit yesterday and had to move to the end zones, really, because the field was so wet from four inches of snow earlier in the week. Here's the big third down and 13. White with lots of time now has to throw it quickly as more defensive pressure is put on him. Number 92 again was uh, Perry and Tom Gilmartin, number 60. Well, the defense of Cal Poly, one time it's the pass rush. That time it was great coverage downfield. And again, Wright had no one to throw the football to, even though he had good protection. So Don Mansky is in to punt the last time. He drove one at uh, 35 yards. It would return 43 for a touchdown by Robbie Martin. This time he gets a wobbly, a little higher kick, and Robbie Martin comes back at his own 38. Up the middle he goes. Look at him go, and he might do it again. He's got the speed to beat the final man. Robbie Martin scores his second <laughs> touchdown of the day. I don't believe it. That is an offensive weapon, and we said again that Robbie Martin has been doing this all year long. 52 yards. There's a marker, however, down at midfield. Those are the Cal Poly fans who are just going wild on the far side of the field. Now, we may, we may have this all called back because of a clip. Well, you will get this on a punt return. You will get the clip. It happens. But I also want to say this, you, I, I couldn't see the clip, and you might just watch it yourself here. And, and there it is right there. I couldn't tell the number, number 60 clipped right there, and it was a good call by the official, very alert call. But Bill, let me tell you, when you have a punt returner like Robbie Martin, your people that are in on the return, they believe in him, and they're going to block a little bit better than the First average down. team. So it was number 60, Tom Gilmartin, who made the clip, Brings the ball back to the 36-yard line. But let me tell you something. Robbie Martin is an exciting boy. Uh, I think they're going to treat him with a lot more respect. And I think you're going to start seeing some balls going out of bounds here on these kicks because they simply can't afford to have a speedster like that room. No, and I don't think Mansky's getting enough height on these kicks. Uh, you know. I think he's worried about the wind. It's a lot stronger than you realize. The flag is pretty much straight out in the end zone. Well, here's the first time from scrimmage that the Mustangs will have the football on their own 36, leading 7 to nothing. 9.48 to go in the first quarter. And up goes to Lewis Jackson. Andy Melvin, number 73, in there on the stop along with Charlie Kretzinger. Now let's take a look at the Cal Poly offense. Craig Johnston of Whittier is the quarterback. And we've got Dan Craig, a sophomore, and fullback. Lewis Jackson from Fresno, a senior. Bobby Martin. The speedster from Orange, California, who's already scored today, and Tim Hannafin, a senior, is the split end. Second down, about eight, all on the 38-yard line of the Mustangs. And off goes to Craig. Fullback gets it up to about the 40, and Alonzo Lee, number 51, along with number 61, that brings him down. Offensive line is Brian Page. What a magnificent beard he's got. Ed Hill is the senior. Rod Shaw, a senior from North Street, Michigan. The brothers Dom, Charles at guard, Mike at tackle, both 6'6", six, six, both 245 from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Vic Jones, the tight end, a junior. Third and six, all in the fourth. And here goes Craig Johnston to throw. It is overthrown as the receiver is tripped. Robbie Martin, not intentionally, of course, may have tripped over his own feet as Rich Brown was covered. So Eastern Illinois 
and breathes a sigh of relief as the defense of Wanowski, Melvin, Kretzinger, Caton, Murray, Lee, and Jefferson hold here and will force a punting situation. Brown, Gray, Pittman, and James in the defensive secondary. Sending one man back. It looks like uh, Charlie Person. That's an, rather unusual. Question from Chicago. John Basella on a fourth down and six. Little high snap, and the rush was on. He drills a line drive. But this one goes into the soggy part of the field, and Person wants no part of it as it rolls down on about the 14 yard line. We'll return to the Zia Bowl in Albuquerque, New Mexico for more of the NCAA Division II Championship game right after this. I'm Bob Clark, owner and operator of the Amco Transmission Center here in Decatur. At Amco, we feature an exclusive free road test and 21-point multi check, which is designed to determine if you have a transmission problem. We specialize in all foreign car transmissions and are equipped to service all the new front-wheel drive cars. All of our services are guaranteed in writing. Ask about our car ownership warranty that is available on all transmission repairs. Stop and see us anytime. We appreciate your business. In 1912, the first production Chevrolet was built in a small garage in Detroit, Michigan. Louis Chevrolet, a small group of mechanics, and a crowd of neighbors watched and cheered as the first Classic 6 rolled onto the streets of America. Since then, Chevrolet has become the most popular car in America. Now the 1981 Chevrolets are at Miles Chevrolet with major body style changes, increased efficiency, and new options for the 80s. The 1981 Chevrolets, don't miss them at Miles Chevrolet. Because they're fun, the high school activities attract millions of participants each year. School activities help boys and girls develop physically and emotionally, too. The National Federation of State High School Associations urges you to support this valuable part of education. The Panthers have a new quarterback now, Jeff Christensen, sophomore from Gibson City, Illinois. I mentioned before that the two quarterbacks have about the same amount of uh, statistics going for them. A uh, combined total of... 31 touchdowns, and Jeff here has 13. It'll be interesting now to see if Daryl Mudrick, making this move, can get that offense on track. You're in the rather muddy part of the field for the first and 10 of the 14. Hand off going to Tyrone Davis, number 35, a freshman, knocked down by Jen Kirchhoff, number 53. There's where you were looking at Davis's statistics. Pretty good for a freshman, scoring a couple touchdowns this year. He goes in there in the place of Kevin Staple, who really is an outstanding freshman with great potential, who's back in the lineup now, number eight. Jeff Christensen running the club, trailing 7-0 to Cal Poly on a 43-yard punt return by Robbie Martin. Here's Staple on the favorite uh, sweep, power sweep, Kirschhoff and Hasselberg bringing him down at the 20, gain of just a couple. I'm impressed. Rick with the defense of Cal Poly. Well, I am too, and they use just a, what they call a straight vanilla defense. It's a 4-3, and it's up to the defensive guy to beat the offensive blocker in front of him in pursuit of the ball, and they have 11 guys to the football, and there you see that Cal Poly crowd. They're happy. They're ahead. 7-zip. And we'll take a look at that defensive alignment as uh, Christensen sets up here on a third and five. Side line, it's over the but it's not enough, I don't believe. Let's see. He needed to go to the 25. Be it had it. He just stretched there on the sideline. And it'll be, yes it is, a first down as Ralph Gallagher, number 26 of Cal Poly, shoved him out. Good move by Grant. Well, it certainly was. Number 90, Otis Grant does an intelligent job right there. Just gets enough for the first down. Boy, I've seen so many times receivers not get quite enough. Boy, he just picked it up. How many men they've got up there? It's really a six-man front. And they put the pressure on. A long one down the sidelines. It is overthrown. Intended for Otis Grant. Gallagher covering on the play. Otis Grant is a senior this year and has had an excellent year. As uh, really, uh, this is, I guess we mentioned earlier, this is really a veteran team. It certainly is. And Again, let me go back to this, Bill. The defense of Cal Poly did an excellent job of coverage there, but we ought to know that because in the last two playoff teams, they've only allowed 14 points, so they are a good defensive football team. 
Okay, Christensen brings the team up to the line with a second and 10. Eastern Illinois on its own 25-yard line. Inside handoff, but it doesn't go anywhere. Kevin Reeder making the stop here on Staples. This program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. We pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WAND, Decatur, Illinois. With seven minutes and three seconds to go in the first quarter from the Zia Bowl in Albuquerque, Cal Poly of San Luis Obispo is leading Eastern Illinois for the national title, 7-0. Christensen fires over the middle, and it's almost intercepted. Right through the fingertips of Chris Jones, number 20, who would have been off to the race. Well, Chris Jones has six interceptions already this year, one for a touchdown. You can see he wants to throw the little turn in now. You'll watch McGee come into the left side of your screen, but watch the break on the ball by Chris Jones. I'm sorry, he was going to Otis Grant, right. but Chris Jones shows why the great free safety should do. He reads the eyes of the quarterback, gets a jump on the football. And it brings up a fourth and 11. So there's been a uh, timeout called on the field, a break in the action at the Zia Bowl, and we'll be right back after this pause. It's very clever how your new V6 Pontiac Grand Prix Brawl gets the same EPA mileage rating as our Datsun 280 CS. For a price that's over $1,600. But how can your Grand Prix seat six people so comfortably and still get the same mileage rating? Pontiac must have something. We don't know how. There's a spirit that lives on in this bottle. The spirit that was born in the original Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. The beer that was selected America's best. That's the spirit that goes into brewing every glass of Pabst Blue Ribbon today. That's what makes us proud to say to you, Give that man a blue ribbon. Today, championship boxing. The WBC World Featherweight Championship between Salvador Sanchez and Juan Laporte. And the World Sports Acrobatics Championship. An unusual event on ABC's Wide World of Sports today. Eastern Illinois with a 4th and 11 is forced into a punting situation. At its own 25-yard line, Don Mansky will be booting it from about the 13 or so. And hey, look out, Robbie Martin's back for Cal Poly. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him try to angle the ball a little bit more toward the sideline. Well, kicks it straight away, right to Martin. At the 37. Now the coverage is down. And Martin wiggles away to the 42-yard line. But everybody was alert that time with Kent Lawrence, number 50, spearheading the defensive charge. Well, they had good coverage that time on the punt by Eastern Illinois. The wall was set up by Cal Poly on the right side, but Martin had received the ball on the left side, and being the intelligent punt returner that he is, he said, hey, I'll take it to the near sideline, get all I can, but that was good coverage by Eastern Illinois. Five on Monday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time. The game that we've been waiting for for quite a while, the Cowboys and the Rams. Both of these ABC stations. Join us for that one on ABC. First and 10 on 43. Justin fires. He's got a man, but he overthrows it. Robbie Martin had a step or so on Kevin Gray. Boy, Robbie can move, can he? He certainly can. He is a threat all the time. There you see a score, Lehigh 10, and he can cut to six in the Division 1A semifinal playoff. And there's a marker down at the 35-yard line on that last play. Greg Johnson talking with uh, referee Pat Flood. Yes, we want to remind you that the winners today of uh, those two semifinal games will meet next week in Sacramento for the 1AA championship. Penalty against Eastern Illinois. Might have been a roughing the passer penalty. Although I didn't, I wasn't aware of it. Let's see. Personal foul on the defense. First down. Uh, doesn't, not very specific there. Ball moves to the 42-yard line, however. 
Bill Eastern's been playing almost 11 men within five yards of the ball, so that was a good call, that first down pass. Let's see what happens here. Well, they stopped that blitzing man coming through, and here's the pass. It was intended for Tim Hannafin, the split end, number 28, Rich Brown covering. Well, they do like to throw long. Well, again, as I point out, this uh, intelligent offensive call by Cal Poly. Eastern Illinois is playing 11 people up, and they say, hey, we want to back you off so we can run the ball, and they like to rush the ball, so we'll throw it downfield. In the other game today, Grambling and Boise State, Grambling is leading Boise State 7-0 in the first quarter. And again in this one, for the championship of Division II, Cal Poly 7 and Eastern Illinois nothing. Here's Craig Johnston being chased, and down he goes. Number 53, Bill Mines. Oh, did he come in there fast. A sophomore from Washington, D.C. was just not stopped with another marker down. He may have come a little quick. <laughs> he may have. That time, Eastern Illinois had the blitz on, and Bill Mines, their middle linebacker, really got to jump on the football, got to the passer. But as you say, it may be against Eastern Illinois. Let's take a look. Personal foul against Eastern Illinois. We'd like to know what those two are about. Take a look here now. There's a play action fake by Johnson. You see Mines getting the pressure, and it's tough to tell where the personal foul oh, I is. I see it. Face mask. Is that what they're it looked, calling? Yeah, it looked like the, like the left hand came right, right across the face mask. Moves the ball all the way down to the 27, 28 yard line. So Cal Poly has really had the brakes here in this first quarter. And uh, with that 43 yard punt return by Robbie Martin, they have the edge in scoring. Eastern's at 50 yards in penalties so far. And it makes it a first down on the 27. In order to win a national title now, you have to win three games. Each of these teams has won two coming into the finals. On the delay, shooting through is Lewis Jackson. Eastern Illinois is trying to change the tempo of their defense a little bit. They blitzed two consecutive plays that time. That time, Charlie Kretzinger came off his block, number 66, the defensive tackle, made a good move to the ball and tackled Lewis Jackson. Jackson's got a lot of spurting speed. Didn't look like a big gain, yet you look at those markers, and he's got four quick ones. He can accelerate. Second and six. And Jackson is at the 20. Picked up by Pete Payton, number 83, named last week as an All-American player. He's the one that carries the sledgehammer around to remind him <laughs> that this is a tough game. I hope he doesn't have it out on the field. <laughs> Here you see Lewis Jackson again, the young man that can accelerate, and he can carry the ball. He almost had a fumble right there. Eastern Illinois made a little change. They've moved Pete Caton from defensive end into the middle over the center that time. That's why he can make the play from inside. Third down. And off to Jackson. I think he may be a little short. Alonzo Lee. Put a hard stop on him there, number 51. The gentleman that makes the play right here is number 57, though, Tom Murray. He is going to put the stop on Lewis Jackson, but you see Jackson, he has really turned up field, but that time the Eastern Illinois defense really converts to the ball, fourth in the yard. And timeout is taken by Cal Poly with four and a half minutes to go in this first quarter. Greg Johnston, senior quarterback who had some tough luck a year ago missed the championship playoffs with a knee injury later on today at five o'clock four o'clock central time we'll have the WBC World Federation Championship from El Paso, Texas back out of the El Paso South area to Salvador Sanchez Big afternoon on the return of Wide World of Sports, although most of these ABC stations.
Fourth down in the yard for Cal Poly. Interesting to see now if Eastern Illinois can uh, hang in there defensively. They've been touted as a physical, strong, big, uh, defensively tough team. And they really have not allowed that much in terms of scrimmage game. The only thing that stung them was a 43-yard punt return. And here they have to be sharp with a fourth and one. Because their goal line is being threatened. The ball is on the 19th. Quick pitch. Marker down. Jackson shrugs off a tackler, keeps on going down to the four-yard line. First penetration was made by Alonzo Lee. And he just shrugged him off. Bill, I believe the penalty is going to be against Cal Poly. The right side of the line moved just a little early. They were going to pull out and lead that power sweep. There you see Lewis Jackson going yeah. out, Leap, limping. limping a little bit. Boy, that would be a real loss. I hope it's nothing serious. That is his right leg or ankle. Well, here we go. Motion in the line. Motion in the backfield. Five. Oh, that's, that's, that's an understatement to say it cost him five. It cost him a lot more than five. It would have been first and goal to go on the three-yard line. Now an attempt by Tom Vasella. Of a 41-yard field goal, he feels very confident that he could kick him 50 yards. So let's see what he does. Out of the Craig Johnson hold. This one is off to the left. Had the distance, but was off to the left. And so Eastern Illinois will hold. We'll take over the football with 4.10 to go in the first quarter. Well, that was a little high snap, so I think it made it difficult for the holder to put the ball down. But Vasella in the playoffs has only been two of six. Now he's two of seven. Uh, that's Jackson on the bench uh, on the far side of the field, standing behind Jerry Schmidt, number 86. He's number 88. Anyway, it's Jackson who's testing that ankle out. First and ten for the Panthers of Eastern Illinois. Not much there for Slaughter as he gets a couple of yards. Tries to go outside Duggan and Reeder. Word from the bench is that the right ankle of Lewis Jackson was turned on that run. And uh, hopefully if he shrugs it off, he'll be back in the lineup for Cal Poly. Be a devastating blow to lose your leading rusher and, in fact, the leading rusher in the nation in this division. 3.46 to go, first throw. And the handoff goes to Kevin Staple, and he is stacked up at the 29-yard line. Reader and Razzo. And you put Tom Gilmartin on top of the pile. Bill, it looks like the defense of Cal Poly has the Eastern Illinois people a little concerned that they're going to be a little hesitant to put the ball in the air. Well, let's take a look at the defense a little more closely this time. As you see, the clock moving with a little over three minutes to go, and Cal Poly leading. There's the defensive alignment as we look at them now. Third down and four. Tight end Mahalik moves out. And off on the sweep goes to Staple, but they close in on him and knock him down for a yard loss. Foot pursuit by Jan Kirchhoff, number 53, a senior from Santa Monica, or Santa Maria, rather. Well, if you're going to play the 4-3, and there you see they didn't play the 4-3 that time. They played an odd man front, but Kirchhoff, being the excellent linebacker that he is, straight through the inside, tackle for a loss. Fourth down. Lansky, who is... Hit uh, three punts so far today. Robbie Martin is back, has returned one for 43 yards, and the game's only score. Two minutes, 18 seconds to go in the first quarter, and they have to wipe off the ball. It's uh, just a little soggy on the field. Had a helicopter out here yesterday hovering for better part of an hour, trying to get some wind there to dry it out after a four-inch snowstorm on Wednesday. No snap, but the rush was not on, and he gets the kick away. And Robbie Martin comes back to his own 31-yard line. The defense is back there, though, and they're ready this time. Mike Shell, number 63, number 53, Bill Mine, number 69 there, also in on it. And it's a first down for Cal Poly being shoved 
a little bit farther back now in its own territory at the 29 yard line leading seven to nothing here in the first quarter. So we'll see now what Cal Poly will do without Lewis Jackson being in there. Their key guy on the rush. It may put a little bit more pressure on their quarterback Craig Johnson. Greg Spiker is in the backfield now as running back. Makes the cut and is down on the 32 yard line. Charlie Kutzinger bringing him down number 66. And warming up on the sidelines will be Chuck Wright once again, who started the ball game, gave way to Jeff Christensen. They're just trying to find the right combination right now, Bill, for Eastern Illinois at the quarterback slot. Cal Poly will have the wind to its back now for the next minute and a half, and then Eastern Illinois will have that advantage in the second quarter. Fumble covered by Eastern Illinois at the 29 yard line. Number 51, Alonzo Lee, who is the big play man defensively. He blocked the kick a week ago, and he recovers the fumble. Well, Alonzo Lee had six fumble recoveries for the year. He is a big play guy. He gets his seventh. This puts Eastern Illinois in great field position. 51, Alonzo Lee. We just received word that Hugh Duggan, defensive left tackle of Cal Poly, has dislocated his left elbow and will not return. And off going and Slaughter breaks the couple of tackles and just rampages down to the 13-yard line. Mel Kaufman, number 56, made the stop. What determination by Slaughter. He was stopped at least once. Well, and that's a sign of a good runner. Rod's number 45, Rod Slaughter from Detroit, Michigan, on a little trap up the middle. There he is. He reads it. Watch it. He breaks those tackles. And boy, that's something you're always looking for in a back. A guy that turns up field knows how to make the extra yards. First and 10 on the 14-yard line of Paul Body in East Illinois with Kevin Staples as Clinton. However, a good penetration by Ralph Gallagher, number 26, spins him around and knocks him down for about a four-yard loss. Boy, again on defense, you're always looking for that corner that can read the tight end block down on the, the tight end is blocking down on the sweep. Gallagher read it, he came up, made the play on Kevin Staple. Second down and 14. Cal Poly, 25 seconds to go in the first quarter, leading Eastern Illinois, seven to nothing, but now Eastern Illinois Panthers have a good opportunity to put some points up there with a first down on, or second down on the 18 yard line. McGee makes a great catch at the four-yard line. Scott McGee of Palos Heights, Illinois, makes a great catch, one yard short of a first down. There's Jones being stopped. Yeah, that's why Scott McGee has been a great receiver. He can come into the middle. He can concentrate on the ball. That time, Cal Poly was in a man-for-man -man coverage. McGee comes into the middle. He concentrates right there. Even though Chris Jones is all over him, he holds on to the ball. Big play, Eastern Illinois, a measurement for a first down here. Oh, that pass was right there. Oh, man, oh, man. And again, he had great pass protection. This is where, right in the middle, you play pass defense yourself right there in your home. But look at that. Look, Jones is all over him, but that is concentration. Just short of a first down by about a foot. So Christensen throws a beauty right into McGee's chest. And Eastern Illinois now, with a third down and one foot, is getting closer to that Cal Poly goal line. Mustangs poised up there on defense. Gilmart, Rezo, Feeder, Schmidt, Kirchhoff, Hasselberg, Kaufman, all poised for the charge. 6 5 up against it. Handoff goes to Laurent Baker. And he gets maybe a yard, but it may be the yard. <laughs> he worked for it, I'll tell you that. That time they're in a, a full house, a straight tee, and they hand the ball to Ron Baker. There he goes. And it is a first down at the end of the quarter. So there is a timeout on the field, and the score here is Cal Poly 7, Eastern Illinois nothing. And we'll be right back for the second quarter. Right after this. We at CIPS are proud of our customer services representatives. They're problem solvers. 
responsible for answering questions our customers have about their energy service. The men and women in customer services are stationed throughout our service area. They know when you have a problem, we have one too. So they're anxious to help. They may not have every answer on the tips of their tongues, but they know where and how to get the information you need. And they'll get it for you quickly and with courtesy. Whether your questions are about the use of energy in your home or at work, help is as near as your telephone or our nearest office. You see, our customer services personnel know people don't always see eye to eye on everything, but they also know most problems can be solved through better understanding. It sure can't hurt to talk it over. Understanding is important because people who understand each other usually get along pretty well. Eisner knows your guests always look forward to your parties. Good friends and good food. They think you did all this yourself. But these elegant party trays have been prepared especially for your party by the Eisner Deli. Eisner prepares these party trays just like you would with taste-tempting meats, cheeses, canapes, and hors d'oeuvres. With so many different party trays to choose from, you can relax and enjoy your party, thanks to Eisner. This is Bill Fleming along with Rick Forzano back to begin the second quarter of the Division II game for the national title between Cal Poly of San Luis Obispo, California, against Eastern Illinois Panthers of Charleston, Illinois. Jeff Christensen has moved the club down now to a first and goal to go on the two, trailing seven to nothing, and it may not remain that way very long. And a touchdown as Slaughter bangs it into the end zone. Rod Slaughter, a fullback from Detroit Cass Tech High School, a senior this year, has put the points on the board, gets a high five. <laughs> well, he's gone over his two best blocking people, number 62, Blair Brown, and 70, Clint Davenport. On the right side, you see he goes in untouched. Big six points for Eastern Illinois, and they're back in the football game. And Jeff Christensen will hold here now for the extra point as Ray DeLong that's right holding for DeLong to tie it up. up. Looks good. It is good. And it's all tied 7-7 seven seven as Cal Poly does not hold that 7 nothing lead into this second quarter. Five plays, 30 yards after the recovery of the fumble by Alonzo Lee. So let's give credit to the guys on the defense and make it all happen. Well, you know, Daryl Mudra said to us that the defense was the strength of their football team, and they proved it right there when they recovered the fumble and set up the touchdown drive. Here is the it, touchdown. Here it is, Rod Slaughter from Detroit, just a straight handoff, going over that right side, and he does a good job of picking the daylight, cutting back a little bit to his left. Again, touchdown, Eastern Illinois. You know, the interesting thing about it, in the first quarter, Eastern Illinois had the ball for 10 minutes and 20 seconds. Now Polly, 4 minutes and 40 seconds. Again, Eastern Illinois trail 7 0. Of course, that's going to change now. But it does show you what that 43 yard punt return did to them. Well, they're both big play teams, and this will happen a lot. So, football teams that have people like that here just see the stats. And really, it, it looks like it's all Eastern Illinois. And it's still 77, and that's the most important statistic in football. Okay, Robbie Martin is uh, there to get it on the first bounce. Up to the 20, right into the sloppy part of the field. Gets away, goes to the 25, to the 30, out of bounds. Boy, what a runner Robbie Martin is. He was absolutely stopped at the 20, gets to the 35, but there is a penalty marker down. See where it was. Well, again, this is something you always like to have, a guy that can find his own way. Watch Robbie Martin. He comes into the middle. It looks like it's all clogged up, but he's the type of back that he always feels like that he can score. He can get the ball. He can get out of there. And watch, he comes out, and he almost makes it all the way. Great effort, Robbie Martin. And the infraction was against Cal Poly. We didn't see it on the return, but obviously somebody was either clipping or holding. Blocking below the waist. Oh, below the waist. On the return, first and ten. So that's back to the 12-yard line, and Cal Poly comes up with Craig Johnston setting the team. It's a 7-7 ball game for the national title. It will not end up that way, oh, hurt, hurt. because there is a playoff system should the game wind up in a tie. Mm. 
Alonzo Lee came to play. <laughs> well, he certainly did. Wow. And he is one of their leading tacklers, number 51, Alonzo Lee from the middle linebacker spot. And again, Eastern Illinois has 11 men up there within five yards of that football. And they know, they say, hey, Cal Poly, we know you're going to run the football. We want to force you to put the ball in the air. 14.22 to go in this first half. And Cal Poly is leading, or was leading 7-0, and now has been tied by Eastern Illinois. It's 7-7. to seven. Second and eight. Johnston on the delayed handoff. Not much. And it's fumbled. The ball was fumbled on the handoff and covered by Keith Wanowski, number 86 of Eastern Illinois. A mix up in the backfield, and Eastern Illinois has turned this one right around at the 17 yard line. Joe Harper, the coach of Cal Poly, he said, hey, we try not to beat ourselves, no, not to fumble, throw interceptions. There you see the ball was flicked out of his by number 53, Bill Mines. Yep. Another recovered great field position. And in the end zone, ball batted away. Otis Grant was the intended receiver. Oh, I'll tell you, that was a sharp play by both Chris Jones and LaCharles McDaniel because that ball was bobbled up into the air on a ricochet, and McDaniel wanted to make sure. He just batted it out of bounds. That's right, Eastern Illinois didn't waste any time. Boy, they were going into the end zone. They wanted to get six right now. There you see one out here. Just recovered the ball and set up field position for Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois' other score came on a fumble recovery by Alonzo Lee. Second down on the 17. Slaughter looking for the hole. Doesn't find much of a hole. And he's knocked down by Jerry Schmidt, number 86. Slaughter. And by Charles McDaniel. Makes it third down. And the ball is on the 16-yard line. 13.38 to go in the first half. Two Division I AA games are being played today. And we'll keep you up to date on those. Eastern Kentucky and Lehigh, the two teams that battled it out for the championship a year ago, are playing in Grambling and Boise State. Back to pass is Christensen. Throws it complete. It's Rob Mahalik, the tight end, at the three-yard line. He stumbles to the two, and it will be first and goal to go for Eastern Illinois. Good deception and good ball handling by Jeff Christensen. It certainly was. It's off a of play action fake. You're going to see him fake to the fullback and the halfback. It's a little half roll, and he goes to his favorite receiver, his tight end, Rob Mahalik. That's the guy. He doesn't have great speed, but he's got the surest hands on the team. He's their big clutch receiver. First and goal on the two as Eastern Illinois now has come roaring back. Slaughter, close, fumbles. Covered in the end zone. Was he over or was he not? No, there is no signal. It's a touchback. Ralph Gallagher bounced on the ball for Cal Poly. Gallagher giving Cal Poly the ball after it was fumbled by Rod Slaughter, short of the goal line. He fumbled it into the end zone. It's a touchback. And that is one of the great turnarounds that you'll ever see. Well, Bill, I'll tell you, when you're coaching, this will make you 80 years old in a hurry. Here's <laughs> Rod so. Slaughter. He's got a touchdown, and just before he hits that end zone line, he fumbles the ball very alertly. Ralph Gallagher of Cal Poly picks it off right there, a fumble recovery for a touchback. Cal Poly has the football. So with 12.56 of the first half, we'll return to the Zia Bowl and now return to New Mexico for the NCAA Division II Championship game right after this. Is sunbeam soft because it's fresh or fresh because it's soft? Yes, definitely. Sunbeam is definitely baked soft and fresh by Purity Baking Company. Casey Summers presents a new addition to their automotive family. We are now Casey Summers Buick, Toyota, and GMC truck. And we now offer you Buick, outstanding quality for over 75 years. Toyota, the number one selling import in the United States. And our newest addition, GMC trucks and vans. Proven dependability for all your trucking needs. That's Casey Summers, Buick, Toyota, and GMC truck in Mattoon, Illinois.
Now, here's the situation. The rule says that the ball must cross the plane of the goal line in possession of the ball carrier. Now, did he have possession? He had lost it by that time, and it's into the end zone and covered. What do you think, Rick? I think that is an excellent call by the official. I do not believe he had possession. All he has to do is have it that long when it crosses the goal line, but they strip it from him before he gets an excellent call, very alert call by the official. So it still is a 7-7 ball game for the national championship in Division II. We're in the second period, 12.56 well, to go. Now Polly with the ball now as Craig Johnson stumbles for a moment, fires it out, has his man, out of bounds he goes, it's a 33, it's Rich Brown knocking Tim Hannafin out of bounds at that point. Well, here's what they're going to have to do, Greg Johnson. He's going to have to sprint out on first down and throw the ball like he's doing here. He stumbles a little bit. He throws to Tim Hanavan because it's one-on-one -on -one because Eastern Illinois has 11 men up there. It's Rich Brown against Hannafin, and Hannafin wins that battle. Well, everybody said that this was going to be one of those games that's who is ever standing <laughs> at the last second of the game is going to win it. Knock down, drag out a fair for the national title as well it should be. Craig Johnson fires it. Got Robbie Martin. Drugs off one guy, gets three extra yards. Tough player. Don Pittman, eventually number 12, knocks him down. Kevin Gray was on the initial stop. And again, Bill, that's an intelligent call. Eastern Illinois is playing for the run. Look at all the people up there. The blitz by the two linebackers, Bill Mines and Alonzo Lee. They get picked off. It's one on one. Robbie Martin who they say is pound for pound is the strongest guy on Cal Poly's team. Look at him break the tackle of Kevin Gray. Robbie Martin is excited. First down on the 43 yard line. Wind starting to kick up. Perhaps you can hear it blowing through our microphones here. Incomplete to Tim Hannafin. They go right back to the well again on the same play, but this one doesn't, uh, doesn't come out. This is the route that he runs. Not very complicated, but no, it's, effective. It's just a little quick out. It's a time play. It's a little sprint out. He has the defensive back. Number 20, Wilbur James Whip. But he, uh, Johnson couldn't get the ball out there to him. And they're doing a good thing because they've lost their tailback, Lewis Jackson. So they're now counting on Johnson to carry the load. Very good point. Jackson out with a, some sort of an ankle problem. Second and 10, on the 43. Now Foley on the delay, hands the ball off to Greg Spiker. Greg gets almost to midfield. He's the replacement of Lewis Jackson and Ira Jefferson, number 46, brought him Ira Jefferson. You know, twice before, Cal Foley has played in these postseason games. In 72, it was called the Camellia Bowl. It was not for the national title as such, because the NCAA didn't start that until 73. This marks the eighth year. It was last year, the Cal Poly, uh, two years ago rather, the Cal Poly went into the championship and lost to Winston-Salem. But they didn't have Craig Johnson. He was hurt in the last regular season game, so he's back in here. Third down and six. Stumbles a little bit again. Fires high to Martin. Can't get to it this time. Brings up fourth down. Well, it's seven to seven, but it very easily could have been 14 to seven because Eastern Illinois came within inches of another touchdown. Only a fumble just short of the goal line with the ball going into the end zone prevented a Panther score. So with Cal Poly getting ready to punt, Tom Vassello will be in and uh, Scott McGee, number 25, warming his hands. It's a cold day, 39 degrees. Wind is whipping in off the mountains to the east. And snow showers are out there covering the mountains and some rain intermittently falling here. Not a very pleasant day for football. And McGee is driven back at the 17-yard line. Here he comes. Nope, there he goes. Ken Ruffin, number 79, bringing him down. So that means that Eastern Illinois will take over the ball and with the break in the action here at the Zia Bowl, we'll be right back right after this pause. Sugar Ray Leonard, Olympic gold medal champion, undefeated as a professional. Now you can try soft condition water at Giant Savings during Culligan's trial offer. Enjoy soft water for bathing, for sparkling dishes, for brighter washes, smoother shaving. Yes, enjoy them all at Culligan's low trial rate. During this limited time offer, you can try Culligan's soft water for just $2.95 a month. For more information about this low trial offer, see Jarl Blank. He's your Culligan man in Charleston.
fondest holiday memories, give the gift they'll remember from Team Electronics, name brand component systems that surround you with sound. Like a stereo cassette deck from Optonica, with auto program locate device that lets you decide which songs you want to hear, and the tape deck does the rest. For gifts that are remembered, attended America's colleges in 1979. Are you one of the millions enrolled for classes during the 1980-81 academic year? The nation's colleges offer an opportunity for everyone. Higher education, people preparing for tomorrow's challenge. You know, a couple of uh, plane loads, uh, fans actually flew out from uh, Illinois to cheer on these Panthers, trying to win their second. NCAA Division II title. They'll move up next year to Division I AA, and I'll explain to you a little bit later on how these divisions are determined and what criteria are used. Here's Kevin Staple. Much there, just to the line of scrimmage. Steve Booker, number 55, bringing him down. Number 63, also on the top, Tom Sikowski. I don't know, maybe this would be a good time to talk about these divisions of the NCAA. The... Uh, the actual criteria involve scheduling and the number of scholarships. And that those are the only two criteria that are used for determining anything other than Division 1A, which is what we often refer to as major college football. But this certainly is not minor college football. It's just simply another division. As Slaughter is knocked down there by Reedy. For instance, in 1A football, 95 scholarships are allowed. And uh, as we look at the scores of those other games here, why well, I'll bring you up to date on how it's determined. You have 95 in one A, you have 75 in one double A. In this division, Division Two, you only have 55 over a period of four years. Next, uh, in the next two years, it'll go down to 45. Rick Pitts to Staple. Nice move that he made to change direction and gets it up to the 23-yard line. Tom Perry, number 92. Making the stop on him with 9.59 to go. And it's a fourth down situation. Well, that was a very conservative series by Eastern Illinois, but they did not have good field position. And I've got to say the Cal Poly defense is doing an excellent job of playing off the blocks and pursuing to the football. That time there were about seven Cal Poly people at the football. And we have a punting situation here as Don Mansky, with a little help from the wind this time. He had to kick his three punts in the first quarter against the wind. He gets a nice kick away. And Robbie Martin fumbles the ball on the fly, but it is covered there by Cal Poly. Lloyd Nelson, I think, number 10, was the man who bounced on it. Ooh, I'll tell you, Robbie's a gambler. He, he took that absolutely full steam. Well, and the great punt returners can do that. They can take it full steam, but that time I think he took his eye off the ball just at the last, last moment that that was an alert recovery. So time has been called here on the field of score 77. And we'll be right back after this message. They said it would never hold water. The book that's taking America by storm. The new consumer information catalog. Just look, Elizabeth, her booklets on home and power repair, children, food, physical fitness, energy, and money. It's not yet the time to talk about interest on checking accounts, but it won't be long. January 1st, 1981, interest earning now accounts will be available from all institutions willing to offer them. In the meantime, an American Savings Cash May 2 payment order account puts you another step closer to interest earning checking, and you'll avoid the January rush. Start a CashMate account at American Savings now and be that much further ahead in January. CashMate and American Savings. Check into both of them. From Myers Brothers, your Merry Christmas store. Meet a revolution in menswear, the Hager washable suit. It never needs dry cleaning because even the coat's made to stand machine washing in warm water. Plus, take the tumbles of a dryer's permanent press cycle and come out looking like this. For convenience, economy, plus the comfort of magic stretch fabric. Get the Hager suit. That's not afraid of the wash. From Myers Brothers, your Merry Christmas store. There's Lewis Jackson trying to limber up on that injured ankle of his. 
there you see 1,424 yards on the season. You can ill afford to have him out of that lineup. But he has not played for the last seven months. First and ten for Cal Poly at its own 43. Spiker, the replacement of Jackson, wiggles up to the Spiker's had a lot of experience. He's a senior. He's not a young back. Randy Melvin made the stop on him. But Greg Spiker, who's replacing Lewis Jackson, does an excellent job again from the eye formation of turning the ball upfield. And again, you repeated it, Bill. It's tough to replace a Lewis Jackson, but Greg Spiker comes up, makes about five and a half yards. And he did. Just short of midfield. High ball game, seven to seven. You're looking at Cal Poly in the green jerseys against Eastern Illinois in the white, green, silver, and blue. And Spiker still keep grinding as he gets it over the field and John Pittman wrestles him to the ground at the 48 yard line. Well, Don Pittman plays strong safety for Eastern Illinois, but he was a linebacker at one time, and he came up from that safety position and just stole him right there at the line of scrimmage. I think I mentioned that Eastern Illinois will go to one double A in the scheduling next year. So this will be their last opportunity to win a Division II championship, a championship that they won two years ago. And they could make history here today because no team has ever won the title twice. Third down and about a yard. Quick pitch. Spiker. Well, there's a, there's a, a tough ball. Lenowski making the stop short of the line of scrimmage. So often we see that when a team needs the short yardage and they'll go wide with it instead of banging right up in there straight ahead. Well, it's kind of one of those situations as a coach. You're, you sit there and you look at your game plan. You say, we think we can go wide on third and one. And that time, Keith Lenowski, the defensive end for Eastern Illinois, just wouldn't let him outside, made the big play. Well, of course, it's a kick against the wind. Vasella has had two for 41 yards on the average. This is his first kick, a uh, second kick in. Has to hurry it a little bit. McGee is back, fair catch, 17 yard line. That's where they'll take it over. Well, next Saturday, we'll have the Division One AA Championship from Sacramento, California. We always look forward to these national titles because as we mentioned earlier, there's nothing like playing for a national championship. The two semifinal games are going on today between Eastern Kentucky, winner a year ago over Lehigh, in Division I AA, and Boise State against Grambling, and we'll keep you up to date on those. Christensen fires it, has Otis Grant. Boy, Otis doesn't get much after the 11 yards. He uh, lost control of the ball, but I believe he was out on the ground. First, that was off a of play action fake, and Otis Grant showed a lot of courage coming into that middle, and they hit him right on the money. But boy, he was really stung when he caught that football, and it's a questionable call whether that was a fumble or not. But the official was right there and said he was down. There you see Joe Harper. He's concerned about this one. He's lost his fine back, Lewis Jackson. And they also have number 20, Chris Jones, being helped off the field. Free safety. There you see the throw right into Otis Grant. Now there's the big hit, and there's the fumble. And again, as I say, that's kind of a questionable call. I think it was Jones who made the hit. I couldn't see his number, but I believe it was, and he was shaken up on the play. Here's Slaughter going outside. Nice, quick change of direction. Number 14, Mike Crow. Throws his shoulder into it. Oh, there is 15 very quick yards by the man who has scored, or almost scored, the touchdown for Eastern Illinois, who fumbled on the goal line. Let me say an inch short of it. <laughs> and he's trying to make up for it. There's Chris Jones, the safety that was uh, shaken up on that last play. He seems to be all right. We talk about Rod Slaughter. He did a great job of going inside, breaking it outside. But he's a runner because he was ranked seventh in the high hurdles in the country in high school. 64 yards and nine carries for Slaughter so far with a first and ten on the 46 yard line. Big handoff. Christensen fires to the sideline, too high. Intended for Otis Grant. With a tall split end. So it brings up a second down with six minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half. Jeff Christensen made an excellent play action fake to Kevin Staple that time. He's going to throw the sideline pattern to Otis Grant, but they had good coverage. Purdue and Missouri, two third-place teams, Stangling, Purdue out of the Big Ten, Missouri out of the Big Eight. 
2 o'clock Eastern time from Memphis on the 27th of December. Mark Herman against Bill Bradley. Should be quite a matchup. Staple goes outside. Not much. Three yards at most. Al Kaufman making the stop. With Kevin Staple, the young man, number eight, the tailback that they like to give the ball to when they run the football. Out from that time, the Cal Poly defense, as they've been doing right along, has been reacting to that outside play. Well, it brings up a third and seven, just short of the fifth. Scores tied. Cal Poly seven, Eastern Illinois seven. Watching the Division two championship playoff game from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Nope. Otis Grant covered on the play by number 37. That is Sherman Turntine. Boy, in Turntine, he was wearing, or Otis Grant was wearing Sherman Turntine. Turntine was sitting right on him. There was no way to complete that pass. Excellent coverage by number 37, Sherman Turntine of Cal Poly. Turned in quite a defensive struggle here as Mansky is back to try to put Cal Poly in a hole and Robbie Martin's back. Oh, a good, strong kick, forcing Martin back to the five. Goes to the 10. And manages to get to the 17-yard line after a 46-yard boot. And that puts Cal Poly, again, deep in its own territory. We'll return to the Zia Bowl in Albuquerque for the NCAA Division II championship game after the... There's something going on. Trust for Historic Preservation is helping to save our American heritage. Expert Tune, the best dollar for dollar tune up value around. We tune your engine at simulated highway speeds on our chassis dynamometers and, where necessary, replace, repair, overhaul, or adjust points. Just give it a cap. Watch. All of this at Expert Tune is only $49.95 for a year. And we'll even give you a limited six month, 6,000 mile fuel for you. Expertune, 1860 East El Dorado, Decatur. Seat, gasket, fuel filter element, thermal air valve, ETR valve. When your car's cooling system fails, it usually happens suddenly and you're in big trouble. Have your Prado Auto Service Center check your belts and hoses, and if they're wearing out, replace them with genuine Gates products, Prado. Perfect partner, serving you pronto, helping to get your car going again. Come on, check out our parts, the supermarket of Otto Parts. Pronto. It might be a rather hairy experience. Lewis Jackson is back in the lineup for the Mustangs of Cal Poly. Apparently the ankle's okay. First and 10. Handoff goes to Jackson. They swarm on him in the middle of the line. Melvin and Kretzinger, 73 and 66 and 57 in there. Tom Murray. Well, there, and there's Lewis Jackson, who they've got to have back in the ball game at his tailback position. But that Eastern Illinois defense playing 11 men up on the line of scrimmage. They're just daring Cal Poly to throw the football on first and 10. And with second and nine, Cal Poly may be a little more inclined to do so. Still have it jammed up there with almost an eight-man line. Here they come. And it forces the pass too quickly and consequently goes into the ground. Alonzo Lee, number 51. Take a look at him roaring in there. Well, there you see almost 11 people up on the line. Alonzo Lee, the second man on the inside, the, in the middle linebacker, came over to his left, put the pressure on right. He just couldn't get the ball. He was lucky to get the ball off. Yeah, Craig uh, Johnston. Craig Johnston, excuse me, I'm sorry. Third down and nine. Up they come with Cal Poly and Eastern Illinois deadlocked at seven in the second quarter, 5.16 to go. Pretty good fake in the middle of the line as Dan Craig, the fullback, number 39, is knocked down by Randy Melvin, number 73. A veteran team fielded by Eastern Illinois that won the title two years ago. Many of these guys were right here, not here, but they were at Longview, Texas when they played that game. Fourth and four. One thing, no one this year has really run on Eastern Illinois, so the pressure is really on Cal Poly, and they are now forced into that punting situation. 
Tom Vaselli is back. Three kicks, averaging 32 yards. Gets this one away. High kick, good driving kick. Forces the receiver, Devin Gray, back to about the 37 and doesn't get much more than that. Good coverage on there. Number 70, Ed Hill. So Eastern Illinois now with four minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first half. With the score tied at seven for the national title in Division Two, we'll have the ball at the 37. And they're not huddling up. They're going to go right now. Bill. And from the deep shotgun, Christensen over the middle, incomplete, intended for the tight end Rob Mahalik. Kershaw making the stop. Trying to go their tight end right over the middle from the shotgun, but as you pointed out, Jan Kershaw, the middle linebacker, had good coverage. Second and ten. Ball at the 37-yard line of Eastern Illinois. Handoff inside the staple. Didn't fool anybody. As coming through there was number 60, Tom Gilmartin, putting the snag on him, and Tom Perry knocked him down. I wasn't sure what that was when it first came up. The balloonist, no doubt. Well, yeah. this wasn't the kind of a day they'd counted on. They're looking for some sunshine and wild wind. Rainy, cold, and about 39 degrees. Christensen sort of faked there tentatively and drills it to the 48-yard line. Was it complete? McGee had the ball, I thought. He did. Completion. 14 yards. First down. Christensen showed a lot of poise. He was in the shotgun. He wants to go to his tight end, number 81, Rob Mahalik. He's looking right at him down the middle. Mahalik is covered well. Christensen comes out. He spots McGee, and McGee does a great job of coming back to the ball. An intelligent receiver, Scott McGee, makes a big grab. First down, Eastern Illinois. And we have three minutes and 29 seconds to go in this first half. Incidentally, at halftime, in addition to the festivities here with some hot air balloons and a few other, uh, I think, exciting things, we're going to be making some observations about the bowl game. What a play defensively as Cal Poly simply throttled that uh, wide sweep. Well, number 95, Ricky Davis, is coming on the sweep right there. But look at the penetration. I can't tell. It is. looks like it's number no, 60, it's Gil Tom Martin. Gil Martin. And he is their big play guy on defense. And he's happy about that one, as he should be. Six-yard loss, second down and 16. I think they've got to get a new ball in there. This one may have some mud on it. 2.44 to go in the first half. All tied. Cal Poly scored on a 43-yard punt return in the first quarter. Over the middle, Wright has his man at the 43-yard line at Dota Strand. Split in. Stan Hasselberger, number 58, making the stop. Otis Grant watching from his split end receiver really moves down the field, puts out a little burst. He might have pushed off right there, but Wright delivers the ball on time and he comes back to it. Again, now it is what uh, first third down and about four for Eastern Illinois. And they have a big first down loss of six. So being 12 on it, but they still have a third down over the middle. And it is number 45, Rod Slaughter, who comes out of the backfield and goes all the way down to the 20-yard line. Chris Jones tripped him up and saved the touchdown. Well, watch Rod Slaughter from the right side of your uh, screen. He's going to run a little flare, comes right across the middle. And Rod Slaughter, he's the back they're going to go to when they throw the ball to their backs. Turns the ball upfield. Big first down play now here. 150 to go in the first half. And the Panthers of Eastern Illinois, the Division II champions of 1978, were tied here 7-7. Have the ball with a first down. Kevin Staple on the sweep. Goes to the 15-yard line. Spins around and still on his feet. Goes down to the three-yard line and close to the goal line as turn time makes the stop. 
nice second effort by Kevin Stacey, who was hit at the 15 and kept right on going. Well, this is one of the advantages of being five foot eight, but Kevin Stable is, he has his two guards out in front of him, Blair Brown and Steve Parker. Watch him now. Boy, he's tried to get clotheslined right there, but little old Kevin Staple, a powerful young man, eludes that, moves it down to the field. They're inside the five yard line, first and goal on about the two. Might even be closer than that. It's about a yard in the length of the football as the clock is stopped with 1.32 to go in the first half. And Eastern Illinois would love to get that extra touchdown to lead at halftime. They've done a good job of mixing it up. They've gone to Otis Grant. They've gone to Scott McGee. They've handed the ball off to Kevin Staple. Intelligent play calling. A little bit chilly down there to be running around in just nothing but light clothing today. The temperature about 39 degrees. And a rather cold wind coming in from the mountains. I don't know, as you look off in the direction of the mountains over there, they're almost obscured with snow and snow showers at the higher elevations. Rain showers here. Well, you know, we've shown uh, pictures of Joe Harper on the sideline, but not of Daryl Mudra. And for the fans at home, they should know that Daryl Mudra is probably the only coach in the country, the coach of head coach of Eastern Illinois, that sits up in the press box during the ball game. Here we go. First and goal to go on the one yard line. Hand off to Slaughter, who fumbled the ball prior to this on the one-inch line and lost it into the end zone for a touchdown. He's given the ball, and he moves it about, I'd say, within two feet. The Cal Poly defense here, led by Jan Kershaw. Watch now. He steps in there, and also with number 56, Mel Coffin. Boy, they hit him right there at the line of scrimmage. Second down. On the two-foot line. Slaughter goes outside and he is in. Touchdown. This time he got it. He fumbled the ball and lost control of the ball, but the linesman said no, he'd broken the plane in possession. So it <laughs> Well, Rod Slaughter goes in there and the initial hole is plugged up. He jumps to the outside. Watch it now. You make the decision. Did he fumble or did he make it in? I believe he had it in. That's right. That was another good call by the official. Instantaneous possession as he crossed the goal line. Watch it now. He's going to go inside. The defense is converged inside. He shows the speed and elusiveness that he has. And Rod Slaughter, determined, goes into the end zone for a touchdown. And here is the extra point block. Blocked it, so it makes it 13 to 7. And that could be very interesting. 63 yards and nine plays. Edie got three minutes and 26 seconds on the clock, and we have 59 seconds to go in the first half. Eastern Illinois now has scored 13 unanswered points. But when you have a ball game like this, both teams can score. That extra point that was missed or blocked is very important. I don't know who came through there, but uh, whoever it was, uh, it might have been Fred Rezzo, number 99. But whoever it was could turn out to be the who. So we have 59 seconds to go in the first half. And Eastern Illinois, the champions of 78, hoping to repeat this year. Let's see if we can see that blocked uh, extra point. Watch the hand. The hand comes up there right is. there. Boy, that is tough to tell. Was it Razzo? Yep. Right. Big so play. Razzo. Coming up with the block extra point. This young lady looks a little on the chilly side. Rosy cheeks. Here's the boot. It's going to be short, hard to handle. Squibs around down there. Uh oh. Goes into the end zone. Robbie Martin touched it upfield. That's why he did what he did. But see, he did not have to bring it out because the impetus. That's right. The impetus was put there by the kicking team. And really, Robbie Martin, watch it now. Even though he muffs it right there, he did not move the ball into the end zone. What he should have done, really, is just going right down, down it. They get the ball out on the 20. Right now, they're in bad field position because they fumble down here. Could be bad. Well, the interesting thing is, uh, you know, when you touch that ball, your condition <laughs> is to get it out of the end zone. I mean, kids don't think about it. <laughs> Coaches think about it. <laughs> Hurry, hurry, hurry. 
the straight old bread and butter football. Coming up there is Lewis Jackson, getting it out to about the eight yard line. So Eastern Illinois has done an effective job after being stung with a first quarter touchdown on a punt return of 43 yards. They've come back, grounded out the hard way, had a couple of good breaks, and Alonzo Lee fumble recovery led to their first touchdown. Bill Harper with an amazing record. 13 years he's been there, never had a losing season. And uh, really is one of the outstanding coaches in college football. I talked incidentally by phone to Dan Devine, the head coach of Notre Dame this morning, and he'll we'll, uh, pass on some of his observations, but he, he was very complimentary of both Darrell Mudra, whom he coached against when Dan was at Missouri and Darrell was at Arizona, and uh, Joe Harper. He was also very complimentary of, of his efforts. 45 seconds to go. This program being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. And we'll pause five seconds now to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WAMD, Decatur, Illinois. And there you see one of the balloons being inflated with hot air in the end zone. A little hot air blown this way, fellas, wouldn't hurt. <laughs> You know, I was wondering why they couldn't use one of those things to drive a wheel on rather than a helicopter. Yeah, one of those big certain. blowers. Absolutely. Here we come up, Cal Poly, trailing 13 to 7. Closing seconds, first half. Drake Johnston. Wanting to make sure that nothing happens down here that would give Eastern Illinois the ball close to the goal line. So they're just playing a very cautious, conservative football as well they should. Bill Eastern Illinois called timeout before because they thought they might get another shot, but they've used up all their timeouts. So I think in this situation, Cal Poly will just let the clock run out, go in, regroup at the halftime, and get things going. Incidentally, we're going to have the exclusive presentation of the Football Writers All-America team on College Football 80 tomorrow over most of these ABC stations. So we'd like you to check your listings for the college All-America team is picked, uh, picked by the football writers. They're going to get a delay here, half the distance, with four seconds, but little do they care because all they want to do is cover the football. The uh, football writers All-America team, by the way, will be on at 11.30 Central, 12.30 Eastern time over most of these stations, although some of our affiliated stations do uh, put a college football 80 on on a delayed basis. So check your listing. I think you'll enjoy watching the 24 best players in America as chosen by the writers this year. An outstanding program produced by NCAA Productions, and I think you'll enjoy seeing. Out to the seven-yard line. That just about does it for the first half here in the Division II Championship of the NCAA, playing for the national title. We'll be back with today's halftime activities about this uh, program after this message on an upcoming ABC show and a word from our local station. Sunday, Charlie's Angels are joined by Barbie Benton and Carol Lindley as they track a hired assassin. Looks like we got a live one. Who wants to crown a trio of angels. Then, the lights go out. We just lost the whole city. And all the rules change. I think it's time you called out the National Guard. For one night, anything goes. It's the most frightening night of your life, and it's all your secrets.